Well, hello everyone. I love my new Edge HD 800 system. And here it is, has, a, has the 0.7 focal reducer, the Orion SG80 guide scope. I'm using the ASI 294 MC Pro, done an Atlas Pro mount. And I've been using the ASI Air for control. And this has been since July 2021. However, I've been having some intermittent issues. I don't think it's quite related to guiding. The guiding's been great, but there have been some issues. And it usually only affects a couple of subframes or maybe a few subframes during a night's imaging. A few times it's been more. So the other night I started with a new project and it's M82. Many of you guys probably already recognize that. And it started out great. The night was absolutely beautiful. It went, everything was calm. It was a little breezy. But it, otherwise, the sky was absolutely gorgeous. And it wasn't really cold out, or too cold out anyways. So I was spot checking it for two, three hours. And everything was working out great. So I let it go until it did its meridian flip. And I went out and checked it. And I saw that code, those issues that I was talking about, which I'm going to show you in a second. And then it cleared right up and continued on for another hour and a half of imaging and everything was great. So I thought, all right, I've, I've got about six or seven hours worth of data. This, this is a record for me. I, as I said, I have a, or it's a record for me because I got a really poor field of view at my house and use most objects. I don't, I uh, can't get that long. Anyhow, next day, I looked at some of that data that I wasn't, I didn't check, and I got two hours worth of this, the, this, this issue. And I've seen this, as I said before, in a couple other, usually I'll get about two or three images of, of this on my subframes, but then it clears up. So, like any good astrophotographer does, I went out and the next day, and I'm checking all the settings, you know, because it looked like, to me, it looked like maybe there was something's wrong with the my mount. Maybe something loosened up. So I checked all the screws down my mount, made sure everything was tight, and I'm jiggling the telescope back and forth, and, uh, making sure the guide camera is secure and everything. And then I began to wonder, you know, I went out and walked my dog, Ruthie, at around 10 o'clock, and I noticed it was a bit breezier. And when I got inside, I noticed it was even worse. I, there was gusting and stuff like that. And I didn't think anything of it at the time. I, I just, just didn't dawn on me to check. And I think that's what the problem was. So I started to look into it in a deep look deeper into the data. And what I did is I went to the subframe selector in PixInsight, and I made several plots. I plotted the the stars. So this red, blue line right here is the individual frames and the number of stars, so 40. And most of it, the good images, they ranged anywhere from 30 to 50, or at least 25 to 50 images. And then I got to this area, which was around a little after 10, and <laughs> this is what happened. And then after 12, it cleared up. I, I kept some of it down. So then this red line, this represents the images that I kept versus I didn't keep. So I arbitrarily assigned the number 20 for any subframe that I kept, and I assigned zero for anything that I didn't keep. And you can see, I didn't keep any of this data here. It was all like that streaking uh, exposure that I showed you before. Then this purple line right here, I, there was, so then there's this purple line. This purple line actually represents data from Danbury's uh, uh, Weather Underground Danbury. This represents a, this represents 
weather underground data from Danbury, Connecticut. This is the wind speed, and you'll notice it was seven miles an hour winds, pretty much steady, because I said it was breezy, up until about 10 o'clock, and then they started having gusts almost to 20 miles an hour. Uh, then they went down to like 12 miles an hour before going back down to seven and eight miles an hour. Now, Danbury is, really, is about 15 miles away from as the crow flies from where I am, but we had similar, we have very similar weather patterns to them. So I think this data is actually not too bad. I wish I would have kept better track of the data when I was uh, collecting it, but uh, as I, and, and I wish I had my own weather data, like a little weather station that had wind speed. So may, may, I might purchase one just to see what happens. So my, Equipment inside my astronomy shed, I've never really experienced this before because inside the ast astronomy shed, it's all protected. And this scope right here, my AstroTech 115, uh, this is actually 805 uh, millimeter focal length. And it's actually, I got a focal reducer, so it's only 644. And again, it's protected by the walls inside. So I don't really, I've never really noticed any wind problems or, uh, as a result. This thing, this was currently in the shed, and it was out collecting data that's the same night, and I didn't see anything. I, I think I can shoot during a hurricane with this thing, and I still wouldn't have any, uh, <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't really notice any um, streaking. It's a 200 millimeter cannon lens sitting on my Cirrus mount, protected by the the shed walls, so there wasn't anything bothering this. But my poor old Atlas Pro, although I've, I, I actually, after seeing the wind gusts that high, and even down here when it was breezy at a, over five miles an hour, around five miles an hour, I'm amazed that it did such a good job, and, and it has been doing such a good job. For the last six or seven months now, so I'm I'm actually quite impressed. People were telling me when they have when you have a longer focal length telescope, you really got to watch out for wind. And like I said, so I'm I this is my first experience with dealing with it. So this is actually I I do have a focal reducer on here, and it's fourteen hundred and twenty two millimeters with the focal reducer. Without the focal reducer, it would be two thousand millimeters, so it would even be more susceptible to these wind. So, what are the conclusions? Well, the Edge HD 800 is definitely more susceptible to wind than my other systems. The data indicates that the Edge Atlas can easily handle speeds up to about 5 miles an hour, which is about 8 kilometers per hour. Maybe from 5 to 10 it can handle, but I'm, I'm not holding my breath on it. It looks like it can handle it, but um, at least least closer to five but i don't know about uh, up to ten and it's not likely to handle anything above 10 miles an hour which is 16 uh, kilometers per hour the canon lens system on the cirrus well that can handle at least 20 miles an hour winds which is 32 kilometers per hour and um and it's at least in in the, the shed uh, i don't know if it would handle it outside of the shed so it's really important to keep track uh, and monitor the wind and other weather phenomena. And, and I think most people know that, but I'm going to start keeping a, a better track of it. And I'm going to try to do that with, with my Edge HD system here and see if I can refine these numbers, uh, see when it really affects the guiding to, to actually get a better handle on this. Because I'd like to, that would, I think that would be, I think it would be really important to um, – and lastly, I think it's very important to continue to monitor the wind and other weather phenomenon uh, worth versus guiding in order to refine the numbers. And I wish I would have uh, been doing this all along, but I'm really going to start to do it now, and maybe I can get some better numbers out here other than just my guessing, you know, from 5 to 10. Maybe I can really get a, an actual number of where it actually – what, what my what my limit to uh, to imaging would be okay hope you found this useful and I certainly did and we'll see you next time